Hello and welcome to the weekly KDE news where I show you a bunch of changes that are happening in KDE and then I actually show you the code to make you understand a bit how it actually works under the hood. So let's get to the first one which is overall the app page of Discover. Last week uh, some people asked me if uh, a Discover was getting a redesign and well slowly it's getting one first uh, this uh, page the uh, apps page and then there's also talks about redesigning the home page and so on. This is specifically about the page showing the application. So uh, here we have a couple of examples. I think they're pretty good one. This is uh, GNU as an example. What we get differently is this header on the top with all of the information and then big buttons, screenshots and text. And of it might look like quite a complex change to make and it probably is from scratch but if you do understand like uh, the basic ideas of QML this is actually pretty easy to understand so I'll show you the code and as far as how it looks it looks pretty good I think that's is an improvement and actually since I forgot to do that let me thumbs it up then we got uh, assorted UI improvements for the SMS application. We can see that uh, as an example, we do get now a search bar, but also here there's the search bar as well. In here we can select the device to show the SMS messages from, and it's mostly about this, plus a lot of other things that uh, I won't go through all of them. Still improvements for the SMS application. If you don't know about what this is, it's KD Connect. KD Connect actually allows you to see your SMS messages from your desktop, even though your SMS are on the phone. So that's pretty cool. Next, we have the add medium spacing property. And I showcase this even though it's not really important and probably might also not get accepted because well, a bit of time ago somebody uh, well commented on one of my video something like uh, you should use something like CSS classes to have one margin that applies to all of the elements uh, so that it is consistent and the fact is that of course we do that. Like It's not like we are setting margin independently for every single element, that's not happening. What we usually do is not only, of course, have some margins for classes, but also even when we set margin um, quantities for those classes, we have some variables that represent various amount of spacing that we can have. Small spacing, medium spacing, large spacing. In this case, the the proposal, uh, I guess together with this one, which uh, change small spacing and large spacing, is to add a medium spacing in between the small and the large one. Right now, as far as I know, there's only the medium and large. Now, small and uh, large are 4 and 8 pixels. Uh, medium spacing, if I'm correct, should be equivalent to 6 pixels. Now, of course, that in theory should depend on, um, like, the font size. As an example, the spacing, the actual spacing changes depending on the font size. So uh, the change itself is pretty easy. We're just adding a new variable whose value is the small spacing multiplied by one and a half. So four by default multiplied by one and a half is six. So it's exactly in between large and small. It's important to notice that large spacing is small spacing multiplied by two. So Kinda makes sense. And then here we have a proposal to actually make small spacing and larger spacing in Kurigami. This is all about Kurigami, sorry, forgot to mention it. Four, space, uh, four pixels and a large spacing, eight pixels, instead of uh, it depending on the grid unit. So the context of this one, this patch, is that the grid unit in theory should adapt on exter external sorry, factors such as font sizes, as, as I've said, and the proposal is to actually scratch that and make it always some uh, amount of pixels. And uh, as you can see, there is a lot of text explaining the logic behind this merge request, which I think is really nice. So if you're interested to discover more how margin actually works and why it seems to be inconsistent in Plasma and how to fix it, well, read like, go through these couple of merge requests to understand it a bit better and keep in mind that most of the time 
Well, first of all, what seems to be inconsistent sometimes is actually depending on how you measure it. We've seen a lot of screenshots that uh, claim that margins are inconsistent, but they're actually, they actually are, and uh, the people who did a measurement did it wrong. And uh, some other times there is inconsistency, and those times it should actually be easy to fix it. So if you found something that's wrong, well, you can try to contact me and I can try to help out. I can't fix everything, but I can try to help you fix everything. Next one, improve the do not disturb, DND is do not disturb mode explanatory text. So before we had do not disturb until today at 1.36 p.m. Now do not disturb automatically ends today. And this is one of those little, little changes that contribute to the users actually understanding what's going on a bit easier. Now, it's not like necessary, it doesn't fix anything that was terribly broken, but a lot of KDE depends on this, like sure, small patches, but those that do actually make a difference when you're using it. We'll see, of course, how these things are implemented code-wise later in the video. First of all, I'm just showing you all of them. Lastly, add an um, indicator line to show desktop. So as you know, when you click show desktop, you see the desktop and right now there's no indicator that it actually happens. With this patch, you actually see a new blue line that says, hey, you're seeing, uh, you're showing the desktop. If you click on me again, I will turn off and get back the windows. So let's go through the code. So this one is actually pretty easy. What we are adding is a line. And how do we add a line? We add a frame SVG item. Why a frame SVG item? So that line is actually an SVG. Why is it an SVG? Because it comes from the Plasma theme. Now, Plasma theme could be Breeze. And in that case, if only Breeze existed in the world, we would probably just use a rectangle or something. But since third parties could also do their own themes and they cannot do right now QML themes, well, we have to go with SVG. So we load up the SVG from the theme. By default, it's Breeze and by default, it's a line. Third party themes could be something different. So we do load that SVG and then we have anchors fill parent. Let me actually zoom this in. Anchors fill parent simply means uh, make this as big as the parent element, which is probably the root element. So as big as there's space available. Image path widgets tab bar. This is the actual path to the SVG uh, relative to the uh, plasma theme. So if you go into the plasma theme, there is widgets tab bar dot SVG and you open it and there's all sorts of lines. Now, there are all sorts of lines because that line could be on the top, on the bottom, on the left, on the right. And prefix, the prefix variable, is actually the one that says, okay, I want this particular line. We have uh, at least five kind of, kind of lines, the west, north, east, south one, and the active tab one, which to be honest, I forgot what that one is, but these four are pretty easy to understand. It's about the four side, uh, sizes, sides. Now, Plasma Core types left edge, top edge, right edge is saying depending on the location of the plasmoid. So if it's on the left edge, you use the west, uh, so the right line. If we are on the top, use the north, so on the bottom line. If we are on the right, we use on the, the east, so on the left line. And I mean, that's pretty easy to understand. If uh, there is no prefix, so if we are not in any of those cases, we use just active tab, which is, I guess, a generic something that doesn't assume the direction, or maybe it's just a line on the top. I don't remember. Then there is opacity. If we are showing the desktop, then it's one, which means that it's normal. Otherwise, it's zero, which means that it's invisible. And then we see on opacity, we do a number, number animation about the, where is it? The opacity, sorry, yeah, it's here. Which lasts plasma core units short, short duration and with this easing type. So this is just to actually animate the appearing and disappearing of this line. <coughs> Next one, do not disturb explanatory text. This is of course pretty easy. We are taking the time, we are formatting it, and then we are adding do not disturb until date automatically ends. And then there is this, which means that in here, on the first position, hence the one, insert lowercase and time. 
which is the time that, well, the do not disturb mode actually ends in, formatted as it's uh, written here. So lowercase plus the slice and what that ends up being is today at 1.36 p.m. Pretty easy, this one. This one, I mean, I've shown you before, uh, it's just changing the grid unit divided by four to just four, which means four pixels is a pretty easy one. In here as well, we say the small spacing is grid unit divided by four. We remove that, it's just four and so on. In here, similarly, we're just adding all of the properties. We're saying there is a, uh, sorry, there is a medium spacing, which is small spacing multiplied by 1.5. There is a medium spacing. There is a medium spacing, which is small spacing multiplied by 1.5. If you want a medium spacing, get the medium spacing. If you want to set the medium spacing and uh, well, if it's the same as before, don't do anything. But if it's different, then we actually set the new size. We do say that we set a custom size for the medium spacing. And then we emit a signal to let everybody know that the medium spacing changed. Pretty easy. In here, we have a bit of documentation. This one, well, I, go, I won't go through the code of this one because it's complex and I want to do this one, which is even complex here. But uh, I mean, I've shown you this before. Let's jump into this one. So for this one, I, I will actually need to take this reference to actually show what uh, everything is comparing it to the actual screenshot. So we are adding, I'm only going to talk about the green lines because it's adding stuff. The red lines was removing what was there before. So green lines, important stuff, column layout. This is the header layout with the screenshot up. I, I'm sorry, I went too up. Yes, sorry, I, I missed a part. Okay, this is the column layout, a column, which is the page content. And uh, I mean, it's everything. It's this part up here, the buttons, the screenshot, the text, this contains everything. Inside of this one, which is called page layout, and as a spacing between all of the elements vertically, which is app info internal spacing, there is a rectangle, which is the header and its background rectangle. So this one, which is a darker gray. Now underneath this one, well, we say, first of all, the implicit height is the height of the header layout. So of the elements inside of it, plus the header layout anchors top margin. So plus the margin of uh, the elements inside of it. The color is the background color, but a bit darker, pretty easy. Then there was, there is what I was talking about, which is the header layout with the screenshot, app icon, name, everything and other, which is a column. So uh, where is it? Screenshot. Where is screenshot? App icon. So here, 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 here. Okay, so this part on the top left. Screenshot, I'm a bit confused because screenshots are actually on the bottom. And there is a spacing between the elements of zero because as explained by the comment, children bring their own spacing. So first of all, we have the screenshots, which are probably, um, if I have to guess, let me try to guess if we see all of the screenshots here. Okay, you, you can see that it's actually on the top here. It's probably either a old or newer uh, screenshot, but yeah, screenshots on the top and it's a scroll view. So basically it's a list of elements that you can actually scroll through because maybe the screenshots are more than you can actually fit. It's visible if the count of screenshots is at least one, pretty easy to understand. It fills all of the width and the height is well, the windows height multiplied one fourth of the windows height or at least 20 grid units from Kurogami. And then we have a application screenshot uh, con component, which is in a separate file here. And uh, well, it just displays all of the screenshots. Then we get a separator here, which also fills with and is visible if there is at least two screenshots could be Okay, I'll admit I'm slightly confused confused by the fact that this separator is only shown if there is at least two screenshots, but I guess the idea is if there is only one screenshot, then you won't have to scroll because it's actually, it just fits and so it will just display the screenshot and that's about it. Makes sense. And then there is a row layout, which is horizontally with the margin 
again, uh, margin is around, spacing is inside, and again, children bring their own. And there is the actual app icon, which is here. And uh, we get the size of the icon, which is some math, it's not particularly complex. And then we set that uh, size to be both the width and the height. The source of the icon is the app info application icon. The right margin is app info internal spacing. And then we get a column layout, which is this column, one, two, three, four elements with app name, description, author, or rating. Again, no spacing, but uh, it does fill width, so it's as large as possible. With a heading, so uh, the name of the application, it's bigger, it's bold. The text is app info application name, and it also fills width. Then there is font weight and so on. Then there is the desc short description, which is a label and it takes the text from app info application command. Then there is an item which is just uh, implicit height, large spacing. So it's basically a margin of uh, with actually, sorry, height, large spacing. Then here you can see that there is this spacing. It's actually an uh, invisible item. Then there is another label for the other. Then there is another invisible uh, element to actually show the margin from this thing here. And then there is a row layout. So again, horizontally, because we have to display all of the stars and the rating, one on the left and one on the right. So it's technically it's a row with the rating and the label which says ratings or no ratings yet. Then we get a column, lay column layout, which is this one on the right with, well, you guessed it, a label, then a separator, then a label, then a separator, then a label, then a separator. And in all these cases, there is fill width true, so it's as with as wide as possible. It's slightly transparent, so it looks a bit grayish. And the text is distributed by, and then you always go get the info from app info. So it's not particularly complex. We get all of these things. And then there is licenses here, which is a flow. So there might be more than one. That's why we get a flow. Flow is generally like, could be some, it truly really depends. It's a layout. So it's to actually show all, all of the elements, but I, you can't really tell what kind of layout without looking at the code. In this case, you align elements uh, horizontal uh, in the center, in the horizontal center. So I guess one on top of another, I guess. And then there is a repeater using uh, a URL button, so a link. And the link has uh, as a, where is it? Model data, which comes from up here, which is the model, which is app info application licenses. What's happening? So the model app info application licenses has all of the information about the licenses. In particular, it, it has two things, which is the name and the URL. So, and when you're, we, when we are giving the model to the repeater, it has, it creates a lot of copies of this URL button saying for each one, what is the name and what is the URL of this particular element. And it's a link, it's just a link. Then we get another separator and that should be about it. What else? Column layout, layout for textile content, probably the description down here. Then another element and it's external, external resources. I can't speak anymore. And it's documentation website donate report bug. And uh, we see that it's named button layout. So it's a proper name. And guess what? There is a tool button with a tool tip, and then there is another tool button. How are these tool button made? Simply put, the width is the widest button in the button layout. So we take all of the buttons. We see how width, uh, how wide, sorry again, how each button is, and we take the widest, and we use that size for all of the buttons. We show the button only if the help URL isn't nothing. Otherwise we don't show the button. 
and then the text of this particular button is documentation, then there is website, and for each one we also show a name, we just, sorry, an icon, we just give the name of the icon, in this case internet services, then button, button, tooltip, tooltip is of course when you put the mouse on top of the, on top of the button and you leave it, it for a bit of time, in this case it's install of remove addons for the application name. And that's it really, there is uh, still a couple of changes uh, later on, but then it's mostly red stuff, so the older things. So I've just went through this whole change, of course not really uh, reading each single line, but that's not useful, I was here to explain you the general concept. And as you can see, I think it's not that difficult to understand, you just have to have a rough, rough um, understanding of QML really. And that was everything. I'm really happy that you made it this far. 23 minutes is a lot, it's much longer than usual. So really thank you for sticking ar around this long and also thank you for all of the people there. Oh, I got the right direction, I usually do this. All of the people there for sponsoring these videos and that's what really allows me to make them because I do this basically every day and it's not really easy to find the time and given that I do receive donation then it's like my job and I'm able to actually find the time to do this so it's very nice. So thanks everyone and see you tomorrow.